Hello, we ready? Yeah. <laughs> We're almost there. Hello. <laughs> yeah, we did it. Okay. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the American edition. Woo! We're back over the Pacific. Um, yeah, yeah, back to the home and of the free land of the eagles. I didn't muck up the time zones. Oh no, my phone is playing the playback. Okay. Um, there's not that many of this week, and you've met us all before, but we'll do the intros anyway, as usual. I'm Spacefire, but you can call me Rose, and I'm the voice actor for Afchan. Nick? Nick. I'm Nick, otherwise known as Pecan2, and I'm the voice actor for Mercury. Well, I am Incognito, otherwise known as... <laughs> and I'm a team musician. <laughs> well played, sir. I am uh, Comiendo, project lead. I've also been on the podcast before. Everyone here has. It's, just, yeah. it's a lonely town. Oof. <laughs> and that, oh that was the shortest introduction ever. We didn't watch that yeah. at all. Um, Congratulations. Well, we can move right on to what we've been doing this week because i think we've actually done stuff for once we have done stuff sadly there was no update video last week to update y'all about that uh there will be one coming uh later today or tomorrow as soon as it gets up <clears throat> so we'll be looking forward to that yeah that will be we can entertain you in the meantime hopefully yeah <laughs> we will do our best um, our caffeine and sleep induced rants <laughs> yeah. I haven't been all that productive this week, really. I missed the team meeting, which was bad of me. But we did do some field research in that I went outside and looked at the stars. So Outside? Ooh, yeah. Outside? That's the wilderness, boy. <laughs> yeah, like, actually walked Roughing for it. five minutes into the middle of the woods to look up at the sky. Wow. What productivity. <laughs> When I look up at the sky, all I see is light pollution. Oof. <laughs> Same. Well, that's why I had to go into the middle of the woods, and you could just about make out, like, a few stars and then a blurry yeah, moon through the, the clouds. Sad Sadly for me, going out into the middle of the woods is a lot more than a five-minute walk. <laughs> <laughs> it's more like a two-and-a-half-hour drive. <laughs> We're lucky that we protect our green I'm spaces out the woods out with my window right now. swords. <laughs> Protecting green spaces. This is America. <laughs> <laughs> our trees are important damn it oh no i was stupid enough to forget my glasses though which are long distance so i couldn't actually see anything at all without squinting oh. which is <laughs> pretty stupid of me i didn't realize until halfway there in the car and i couldn't read one of the road signs <laughs> i wasn't driving i wasn't driving <laughs> i have actually done that before where i was just so tired going to school that I literally like, took the bus, rode it for half an hour, got to school, got into my first class, realized I couldn't read the board, and then finally realized I didn't have my glasses. <laughs> I've only had them since the summer, so I'm still not that used to it. Oh, that's my excuse anyway. But I... <laughs> I, I had had them for two years. I have no excuse. <laughs> I've also done the thing where I have way too many glasses cases, so occasionally I'll pick up a pair of glasses case and be like, yes, I've remembered them, but it's just an empty case. <laughs> so when I actually <laughs> go to put them on, <laughs> nothing's in the case. Um, oh. Mick, have you done anything this week? Interesting? Or team? Or... Um, I mean, I got Detective Pikachu and I'm having a good time, but that's about it. Oh. Well, if you're having a good time, that's a good thing. Yeah. In Cog, I think. I guess Oh, yeah, ahead. so, um, well, I guess me, um, I've been just working on some music uh, stuff for the team, just in general, and we are... Secret, secret projects? Secret yes, squirrels. Yes, we are working on a very top secret project that TM. will really, um, that will really push forward the professionalism of the team as a whole, <laughs> and uh, boost morale and whatnot, so if you, <laughs> please do look forward to that next week. Yeah. We are working very hard. Very productive on this. Yeah, we've been slaving yeah. away all week at this. So it's yes, going to show the exactly. true quality of what we can do. Yes. <laughs> Don't overhype, guys. 
I don't think this is overhyping. I think this is underhyping. That's, I don't, that's I don't, completely fair. I, I, I don't think they're ready for the marvel which we have prepared. I can yeah. confirm, after recording some lines for it last night, it should be a beauty. Yes. Yep. Well, I guess that quite quick, quite clearly shows what you've been doing as well. Have you done anything else cool this week? Uh, this week, I have actually been way more productive than in the past month. <laughs> because we finally <laughs> sat down at the end of last week and had a full, full-on animators meeting to discuss uh, production, what we want to do, um, things going forward. And then this week, I wrote a, <clears throat> sorry, a script for something that will be coming out, not the secret project for this week, but something uh, further afield in the future that will come out before episode one. And uh, so production is moving forward on that. We've also had a lot of art this week from the artists for Pluto, and not so much for Neptune, Pluto. but we are still going to push those char two characters back a week and try and get some better designs for them. They are looking really cool so far, though. Yeah, we've had a few... Um other updates on art, I think, with um, some more on model stuff as well. So everything's coming together really excitingly. I know yep, yep. D-Pad was doing some stuff like yep. that, which is really cool. We really Indeed. need to get him on the podcast. Every time I ask, he's like, no. <laughs> I think it's um, <clears throat> it's just his natural aversion to talking, combined with like it being his finals week, I believe. Uh, oh. Uh, nice uh, yeah, that's probably not the best week. Maybe in yeah. a fortnight when it's back in a good time zone for him, I'll just tackle. Just randomly add him to the call anyway, and suddenly he's on. <laughs> I think that'll work. What? He won't have a choice. Yeah, D-pad is the true art and production master. The big D. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what we call him now. Yeah, that's probably the art best nickname I've ever come up with. I would I would agree with that. The big Pretty D. good. Yes. Yeah, it's excellent. But he is the big D. Like everyone answers to him. Sometimes, <laughs> like I'll write like an entire paragraph, and he'll just be like, "No." Oh, <laughs> okay then. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> I mean, he has the actual production experience, though. So yeah. His his advice counts for a lot. It's like. My advice takes like whole paragraphs and he just needs an emoji and everyone knows what he means. <laughs> even even his silence speaks wonders when he refuses to comment on something. Just, uh, that's that's bad. We, we, we love you, D-pad. Don't leave us. Yeah, I don't know if he even watches this. It's probably a waste of his time. Oof. <laughs> Oof. Don't go the way of Luigi. Oof. Oof. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so I'm trying to think if there's anything else on production or team side of things. Uh, I think I think we were just very busy this week, but it's a lot of secret squirrel stuff. Yeah, yeah. We've been busy burying our nuts. <laughs> um, that just yeah. sounds yeah. wrong. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Another sense. In, in a figurative sense, not a yeah. literal yeah. sense. Yeah. Yes, yes. <laughs> Everyone knows totally what I meant. That's I'm sure you have to know what I'm very one thing. <laughs> the gay ponytail? We thought. Yep. Yeah. Did, did we decide on ponytail, yes or no? Uh, 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 probably not. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, he doesn't want it, unfortunately. He really, really doesn't want it. And we can get the um, distinctive look in a variety of other ways, so it's okay. Can Mercury have the ponytail then? Ah, uh, no. Oh. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, it makes sense. There was one other big thing that happened in the server this week, though. And that was. Um, an invasion. Ooh. Oh, yes. With um, um, we the visual of, novel group, SLG yeah. Studios. We kind of started oh. it in that um, Scrub, Scrub Lord found the, um, their OST in their latest post <laughs> and posted it in Team Music. And we were like, oh, that's really good. 
oh no and then <laughs> from <laughs> from from the rivalry a couple of us went to stalk on their ch their chat and we were like hi we're from the anime group we're here to steal all your secrets <laughs> <laughs> and then great spies and then yes on In no i actually crowded. i think i think the message i put was i am totally not here to stalk you um <laughs> 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 and then, uh, and this was the beginning of fruitful diplomatic relationships between the two. Circles. Yeah, they came. They came to say we went to say hi. They came to say hi. They stayed. They got married, had children. <laughs> hey, oh, yeah, they Matt the cracking himself in the chat. Yeah, <clears throat> married them. Oh, ah. This is Hello. where the boys have got married. Greetings. The server is not the property of local creep. You have been manifested. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> well, I'm gonna go ahead and turn that around and hit you with a no you, my dude. <laughs> Your server is now the property Ooh. of Soul Studio. <laughs> yeah, there's more of us. We we could stand on you. We win. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, found but yeah. So we're gonna do some a little bit of cross promotion between the servers on our next updates, respectively. So. If you haven't heard of Studio Local Group, look for the look for their links on the next update video and update post on the server. If you're not on our Discord server already, get on there. Yeah, uh, link in the description of the stream. Yeah, we we have lots of good times. You you missed out on a whale of a party when they came in if you were in our Discord. Oh. <laughs> oh yeah, that was a great time. Good fun. And you can get married on our Discord server as well, so that's that's another another plus. Everyone everyone wants to get married. I found out that this morning as well that um marriages using our bot Mantaro actually carry cross server. Mantaro remembers really? who you marry. So you can't marry twice <laughs> on another no. server. Which <laughs> was um that, yeah, that's the best automatic anti-cheat system I've ever seen. But your your <laughs> yeah your money and stuff carries over as well. So that, that's that's it's it's very well enterprised. So you can have your own like commands, but you can't marry two people. Mantara knows. Mantara will expose you. <laughs> <laughs> but, Has AI gone too far? Oof. <laughs> <laughs> Scientists don't know yet. Top 10 anime betrayals. Mantaro, no! <laughs> <laughs> but is the betrayal Mantaro? <laughs> or when one. you realize your waifu has married someone else? Oof! <laughs> hmm. <laughs> Mantaro is the waifu. Oof. Number two on top 10 questions science can't answer. <laughs> <laughs> Will we make it to 10 in this episode, I wonder? <laughs> <laughs> We'll certainly try. Uh, with that, I think that's probably a good roundup of all the memes from this week as well. Incog, you're the yes. you're the meme meme queen machine. Did I miss anything? <laughs> yes. Um, I would talk about these matters, but they would shoot me out at the steps at dawn, so I cannot talk about what I've been doing. Yeah, yeah. Sadly, there's a little bit of an embargo on what memes the team's been working on this week, just because it's part of the secret project. Yes. Yeah. Mm. Yep. Uh, I think I posted Dash NASA, so if you ever go on our server, please do type in Dash NASA. A nice sneak preview of what's <laughs> going to happen. Yeah, yeah. Wait, which, oh, what, no. What is the, is, is the Dash NASA the one with America? In? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yeah, if you haven't seen that, go do Dash NASA right now. I'll be watching. <laughs> it's definitely worth taking a look at. Yeah. It makes me slightly uncomfortable as the NASA VA, but, <laughs> you know, there's, there's been worse things being posted in team chat about me. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you specifically. Uh, specifically me. Not even NASA it's anymore. Not even NASA. That's respectable. It's not even NASA anymore. There's I was going to say, you can't, up you can't feel too sorry for NASA with what he does to Earth Chan either. No, of course not. Oh shoot, I see Nat Kraken has actually done it. <laughs> yep. <laughs> oh, you the OG. It seems like it's our only viewer at the moment. Oh well. 
props to you. You can be viewer no, of the six week. viewers. There's four of us, and actually, no, only three, because I'm watching directly from the Soul Studios account. So there are three people watching. So hello to everyone who's watching. <laughs> We're not alone. And if yeah. you're watching on YouTube, be sure to follow the Twitch channel if you want to watch us live and ask questions. Oh yeah, shout out to the 20 people that watch it after The future. <laughs> you guys are great, keep watching. Those, are, watch those the... are 20 more views each week towards the million view challenges. Oh, yes, indeed. Yes. <laughs> if so... we divide 1 million by 20, how many is that? Oof. We're going to be doing podcasts for about 50 more years. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy, strap yourselves in. Let's hope I get internet as good at this at university. <laughs> Otherwise that could be an issue. I'm still surprised we haven't had any terrible cutouts yet. No, so whatever but... internet I get at university will be better than what I have now. Unfortunately, I cut out for a little bit today, but it's doing better now, so we are in. I had it last week. I was out for an hour before the stream and two hours afterwards, but the period of the stream was just perfect internet, <laughs> which was totally incredible. It's like like NASA's playing with the wires. <laughs> I got you, fam. <laughs> 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 I have felt a bit like Earth Jam this week, actually. I've killed a cactus. Um, <laughs> what? <laughs> oh. <Oof. laughs> and you killed a cactus. Yeah. I've... That's murder. <laughs> I have I have multiple cactuses in this one like bucket pot thing. And I usually water all of them individually, but maybe this one like drains faster because you they cat the water collects in the bottom of the bucket, so technically they can all like get as much water as they need, you know. But maybe the other ones are just hogging it a bit too much because one of them's a little bit brown. Oof. It's a bit. It's a bit sad. <laughs> Nat Kraken would be F to pay respects for Net Cactus Coon. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we'll send our thoughts and prayers, guys. Uh, I'll I'll let you know how he's doing next week, but um. Oof. Yeah, we need another status update on Cactus Coon. Yes. Cactus updates. Get better soon. We love you, Cactus Coon. <laughs> I'd give Cactus Coon head pats, but you know. <laughs> uh, oh, um, I was gonna say we can talk about the characters, but we've kind of gone over that, so we can move on to our first question of the week. I remember when I was gonna do oh, like boy. one of those, but ended up being like four. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> did you say something, Nick, or did I just imagine that? I did not say anything. Okay. <laughs> so Maybe head. I did drink the caffeine Ooh. a little bit quickly. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, talk about this week in kind of relation to stuff that's been happening, but kind of not, because you totally don't know what's going on. Um, and actually mainly because SLG are outdoing us in that department at the moment. Oof. I wanted to talk about music and soundtracks and things. Um, we've talked about it a little bit on the podcast before in like regards to the um, opening, but that was when there was 10 people in the stream and it was a nightmare. So <laughs> um, maybe we can have a bit more of a civilised discussion this time, but just in terms of soundtrack in general, but more of what your favourites are and then what aspects of that we can draw. A bit like when we did the sci-fi thing, but mm. similar. All right, sounds good. So I guess I can start. Um, oh, um, it can be from games or anime or literally anything, just to clarify, because like, I think drawing lots of inspiration is good. If I was going to no, say a game, um, I really like the Starbound soundtrack. You guys probably see I play an awful lot of Starbound anyway, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, which is kind of a problem. But this the soundtrack is really good. It's one of the only games that I've never muted the soundtrack of. Like I played a lot of Minecraft when I was younger, like back in the day, back in the day, I played like a lot of Minecraft, <laughs> and I got bored of the soundtrack after like three hundred hours of listening to it, and then I would Fair have enough. it muted and listen to other music. But I think Starbound's yes. like the only game I've played extensively where I've never muted the soundtrack because it's diverse enough that like you don't get bored of it. And there's some really like it does almost what Undertale does in that there's like some repeated like notes that go through different themes. So it like pulls Motif. you back in. That's what they're called. I wish I went to music school. 
Um, I don't go to music <laughs> school. <laughs> well, you know, I never. But yeah, yeah there's like that's, <clears throat> there's like the sort of bits. Yeah, the repeated bits that's actually, yeah, that's something we talked about in the team meetings, and I failed miserably at coming up with a oh, name for it. <clears throat> uh, yeah, but... A series of notes is indeed a song. We've clarified that after the <laughs> uh, <laughs> But so the repeated notes and then just changes to it based on what's going on. I do, I really like that idea and like when it's in a soundtrack because <clears throat> you maintain continuity. I think one of the other like you're in the same show. The, the good thing about this, the soundtrack to the story, because obviously Starman has a story, and then you can like go off and do whatever you want and ignore the story if you want to. But the the soundtrack from the very first cutscene and the very last cutscene are almost exactly the same, but with like a different tone to it. So like it literally pulls Ooh. you full circle. So like the idea of having I do like. like so at the beginning of a story arc and the end of the story arc, having a very, very similar theme to pull you back around to the beginning is really yeah, nice. That, that would be a really cool idea. It's yeah. like the first... the. I was going to say not to spoil anything, but I don't think anybody really cares if I spoil the story to start about. <laughs> <laughs> it's not like I'm going to have an angry mob against me. Um, at, the, <laughs> at the beginning, the like the earth gets destroyed while you're at your graduation ceremony. No! <laughs> so close. I know, it's, it's heartbreaking. <laughs> <laughs> I get blown up in the first 30 seconds. <laughs> um, Dang. It's a bit like Hitchhiker's Guide, actually. There's 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 a running theme with things oh, I yeah. like, isn't there? Yeah. <laughs> just don't like to read this. Spoilers, no, I'm just kidding. Um, um, and they're like, there's a soundtrack that plays like as the Earth is being blown up, and it's the same. Uh, basically, the end of the game is to destroy the planet that destroyed Earth, and the same soundtrack plays as they both blow up, but the the last one is like sadder and yet happier at the same time i don't know how you explain it it's like it's bigger basically instead of being like slow and sad it's like oh yes. big but it's the exact same song and it's like oh my god and then you start crying huh. yeah <laughs> that would be cool to incorporate into the show somehow yeah just to because i think yep. music can really help you to pull things like round if you know what i mean like oh absolutely i like i definitely believe that music makes a show sometimes it can make or break a show and i definitely want it to help out yeah. our show more than just be an addition to it and i think musicians another... will try our very best another way yeah. we can incorporate that kind of unity is by having like character themes i know we've talked about that in the past as well but like yeah. say if every time they're talking in um Earth's living room if it's the same themes playing and you start to draw parallels between things so yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. that's, that's my, the first soundtrack I can come up with. Is there anyone else want to step in? Because I can continue. I love music. Uh, but... I mean, I, if, we're, if we're talking about game soundtracks, um, right. I, like a lot of, I like a lot of game soundtracks. Like the Pokemon ones are amazing just because do, do, it's that do, childhood do, nostalgia. Do, 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 do. Yeah, <laughs> it's just so iconic. I actually have a nice little point of unit of the whole circle coming around thing with the Pokemon soundtracks. They did it recently. Oh, yeah? Hmm. Okay. Quick story time. <laughs> but it does have to do with music and soundtracks. <laughs> All right. Whole coming around full circle. All right, go for it. So, the Pokemon Sun and Moon games, some of the latest, um, they got a lot of hype, and there was a lot of trailers for the game. And, you know, it was uh, super exciting. And then, the game comes out, you make it to the end of the game, and the final boss theme is the same music that plays during the trailers. Which oh. was the start of all the hype, mm. and it was so <clears throat> good. I haven't finished hey, Moon yet. Pretty cool. I've got over oh, two... it's worth it. The story's I've got, amazing. I've got over 200 hours in it, and I haven't finished the game yet. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> then I won't spoil who the champion is, because I was about to say having to do the circle thing again with the champion, but I won't Yeah, say. no, I, I, was, I got into the habit of completely... I being up all my mons before I actually get to the final boss, so it takes me forever. <laughs> and I'll like, my my aim is it's to fine. finish the Pokedex before I finish the story, or like as much as possible. <laughs> so yeah, that's not possible. There's a few areas you can't get to to top post game. Uh, damn. Oh, well. I'll do it like as much as is humanly possible. 
Mm-hmm. I'm going to beat the world record for the most hours without mm-hmm. finishing the game. <laughs> uh, that would have to go to um, several of my friends when they were younger who didn't know how to beat a gym, so they grinded their Pokemon up to like level 100 on the second round or something. Ooh. What? What? Oh, it was man. crazy. I think they had said they had a level seven, a level seventy Empoleon by the second gym in Platinum. <laughs> Why? Because oh, they didn't know what to do, so they just <laughs> ran around in grass and fought Pokemon for hours. <laughs> Ouch. My my oh, that's man. way opposite of my tactics is I would just YOLO every dr- gym with the Pokemon I had without trading. Yes, yeah, starter <laughs> so Pokemon I'd win. always, man. Yep. Only level your starter Pokemon. Exactly, dude. <laughs> Obviously yep. the best strategy. So the Reach first the time the I game. played I ended up like <clears> that, but and then I got like I always chose the worst starters though, so then I got into the habit of... When Full Moon came out, I was like, I planned my team and everything because I was playing kind of semi-competitively with Sapphire, but then I, like, just didn't because I never finished it. Oof. It Finishing the story is great. I will. How uh, far are you in the story? Um, uh, I think I beat, like, the third... The... Because they have, like, the, the path things, or whatever they're called, like, the... Fiestas? No. When you're doing the challenges. Yes. And they're like the going on. Yeah. I think I've done like the fourth one. Ooh, you aren't de- you were so close to when the story picks up. When you get to the third island, mm. the story is great. Picks up. Uh, I know there's like the That's little when the plot actually starts. I know the little flying <laughs> thing is really annoying. Whatever his name is. Flying. I I haven't played since the summer, really, so <laughs> Oof. You're either talking about Nebby or Rotom decks. Both of them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah the, the Nebby's adorable, especially the, with those get in the bag memes. The, if we can, the the uh, the iconicness <laughs> of the Pokemon soundtrack is definitely. It's something. it's yeah. But anyway, another game for the soundtrack that I really like on is um. I don't know if you guys have ever played Near Automata. I want to I've listen to the soundtrack of that. It, I think, did it? I think, I think it won soundtrack of the year last year. It's uh-huh. a fantastic soundtrack for the game. It relies, um, like, we probably couldn't use too much for it because it relies so much on vocals. But uh-huh. the whole soundtrack Oof. is. Oh, yeah. Um, like, oh, no, it's... Commando. Yes, we can. <laughs> <laughs> oh, if they're my vocals, oh no. Yes. But um it use it utilizes like full orchestra to play all of the songs and then there's a lot of vocals and I love orchestra. Like, there's a lot of chanting and everything in it. It's a really, really good soundtrack if you haven't listened to it. Even if you don't play the game, I would recommend just listening through the soundtrack. It reminds us of the play. game, just for everyone that was kinda of zoned out. Oh, near Automata? <clears throat> N-I-E-R. If you search that up, you'll find it. Cool. It's I will listen to game. that later. My yeah, recommendations we get on the podcast good. are the best. <laughs> Follow us just for the recommendations, guys. <laughs> <laughs> I could give we recommendations all day. We are not sponsored by whoever. Yeah. We are uh, waiting for that Audible sponsor, though. Yes. <laughs> and Gogurt. Oh yeah, Gogurt. Yes. Go-Gurt, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Last week's podcast callback. Uh, yeah, I think. All right, since... or- orchestrated is something we probably won't be able to do. No, probably since, not. <clears throat> synth orchestrated is kind of. I mean, we nearly. I was going to say we nearly have an orchestra. We have like four instruments. That's fine. That's four. an orchestra, right? Close enough. Close Easy. enough. Uh, and vocals again. Or you can just I call think it a quartet. Oof. Vocals would be different, but difficult. Because I think we have some singers within like the voice acting group, but Commando. <laughs> yeah, come... <laughs> <laughs> it's it's you'll, difficult you'll to... to yeah. And it adds a whole another level to the mixing of everything. Yeah, vo- vocals are so much more difficult to mix than anything else. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Yeah, so most everything will probably just stick with instrumental, except for maybe the opening and ending. We might do vocals with those. We can't really have nope. an opening without vocals, I don't think. Yeah. Um, unless it's yeah, like, it's... unless we use a recorder instead or something. 
<laughs> recorder. <laughs> recorder and vocals, do, 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 do. I think, is the best option here. Replace the recorder with ocarina. <laughs> yeah, that works. I, that, that's fine. We don't need vocals in that case. Yeah. I think ch the chanting thing got me, though. If we have the, the Mars um, track as chanting, that could be quite funny. <laughs> no, no. I, actually, the near soundtrack would fit really well. There's one song in it that would fit really well as Mars's conspiracy theme, just because it Ooh. has a lot of drama and tension in it as a song with a lot of chanting. It's called, like, You Shall Not Advance or something like that. Oh. Sounds... Send it to the music team. That sounds pretty intense. Oof. Yeah. I think, I think intense would be quite funny for what we're... Yeah, it would, it would provide a good contrast, if nothing else. I definitely I'll think chanting is something we can do. Chanting would be, be nice. easier than normal vocals, because <clears throat> we're very yeah. good at being creepy. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's what we should do for our opening, just rip off the Lion King, have the beginning, just like ch <laughs> chant, chant in Japanese weave for like 15 minutes at the beginning. <laughs> Oh, man, I feel the length of the episode, a full 24-minute episode. Uh, have you guys got any game soundtracks? I mean, we can move on to, like, anime and oh, stuff. I, I, I didn't one. mean just I mean, games, I mean, but... I mean... <laughs> oh, if we're going to talk about anime soundtracks as well, I, I could be here all day. Yeah, I was going to say. <clears throat> it's easy to pick one or two, but... Well, I think it... Cause I mean... <clears throat> <clears throat> There's obviously Undertale. That's obviously yeah. a pretty good mm -hmm. one. Good that game. is a really good one. You got those like four mo motifs are just repeated all throughout the game with different levels of intensity and whatnot. And that's Until really you cool. cry. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> what else is there? I think oh. Undertale was like a good soundtrack as well because it's like repeatable. Like the amount of things that people did with the soundtrack, like mm. recovered it oh, and yeah, orchestrated it and remixed it and added vocals and this that, and the other i think that yeah like the versatility of the soundtrack <clears throat> like it was it right. was made for the game but if there was like i feel like he could have added like another six hours of gameplay and not needed to write any more music because he could have just changed it because it was also yeah like... yeah and one thing he would do is just like change pitch of songs and change pitch change like speed so that's literally like one change you have to make and then you got another new song you know yeah. So, um, other than that, that, for like anime and stuff, I'm a big rock fan. So, Kaon's gonna be a good one for me. That's <laughs> great. Yeah. And um, there's also Cowboy Bebop. It, it's strange because I watched that show like a long time back, and when I watched it, I still wasn't that into music. So then I was just like, oh, you know, the soundtrack is is okay. But then, like last week, I just listened to it. I'm just like. Oh, this is really darn good. And, no, it's get, like, it's genuinely yeah, like that. really good. For some yeah. of the old ones from from that era, just like when you look back at them, you're like, holy shit! Like, you oh, don't yeah, realize. Like, I, I definitely would love to have elements from the more classic space shows like that in it as a nice nod. Yeah, that and um, I don't think we can go anywhere without having like a Neon Genesis. Oh. Yes, yes. Oh, don't worry. Next week. Yes. No, no, no spoilers. <laughs> no spoilers. Just yeah. say it's related um, to what if we're we doing next get, week. If we can get an opening that starts off as strong as that, I think we're good. Yeah. Do, do, do. Uh huh. And that brings oh, us back to the vocals problem. There's in in <laughs> modern in like for like more modern anime, there was a girl's last tour. They have this one rain song like Amandare no Yuta or something like that. It, especially with context for like what was happening in the song, it was really great. No, yeah, and Girls Last Tour it. definitely has a really good OST. Okay, I'll, I'll just spoil what happens. It's like the the two girls they're sitting under like an overhang and it's and it's raining, and so they're just stuck there. And there's rain dripping through, and then one of them starts putting around cans, and like the rain goes on the cans and starts like making sound, and they're like, "Oh, is this really music or something?" And they sit around, and then slowly they blend in the rain music, like hitting the cans into like an actual beat. And I'm like, oh, this is some pretty funky rain. And then, and then they actually go into like this really nice light song. It was really cool. 
Oh, that is really cool, actually. That's, yeah. It's sweet. Huh. I think I think if we can manage to fit the music to the to the show that well, that would be nice. I think yeah, that would... I can't remember what show it was, and it, it might have been like a random cartoon or something. But there was one um, I watched where the the last line of every episode led into the same ending song. Huh. It was a bit. It was a bit like Phineas and Ferb in that, like. You know, it's the same plot, like the same thing happens at the beginning and the end of each episode. And they say like oh, the yeah, same yeah. lines and then it fades in. But it was like every every episode, it might not have been the same line, but every episode the the ending the lyrics of the ending like finished it. Hmm. Huh. Hmm. So it That's was pretty cool. A bit like it might have been like a children's program or something, where it's like like it was like, Oh, it's time to go home or something. But I don't think it was that simple. I don't know. It's just a, the idea of like tying everything back in is really like. It just feels like it would make it be better. Yeah. But like when, when I think about the music, I always come back to the idea of like knotting everything together, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Like. Because mm-hmm. even if we have, I think that's the same with. Things like Nichijo and Hetalia and other animes like that, they have like really random scenes, but they don't feel random because it like flows nicely with the music in the background, with if you know music, what I mean? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like you get a scene switch on a beat or the song will change when you move to a new area. Yeah. And it doesn't like, it doesn't feel like, like... Chibitalia has its own track. Chibitalia. There's always the same sort of beat change. Yeah. When you go into the Holy Roman Empire, they talk about something else. I I do really like that concept and how they do it there. Mm. And, you, and it does it doesn't like it's not like the song changes, it just changes style. Like yeah. so it's like enough to like keep it so it doesn't feel weird. Yeah. Mm, yeah, there's not actually a lot of different songs in that soundtrack, I don't think. They play them over and over again, but each song has sort of its like yeah. its own style and it's played for a specific part, so it works well. Yeah, going back to I spent quite a long time in the Hachalo fandom, so I think I can name most of the songs. One of the songs from that soundtrack we could probably definitely take inspiration from is I think it's called The Axis March or something. And it's um the song where Germany, Italy, and Japan are like training, and it's just such a happy like oh, that one. And I, like, I do remember the, that. The, 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 yeah, and it's like it's a marching song, so it's like a fast beat, but it's still chill enough that you could play pretty much anything over the top of it. And it's a really, yeah. it's a really, really, really nice, happy and yet chill song. Like manages to pull it off quite well. You should probably find that and put that in team music as well. Nick, is there any soundtracks that you've um, particularly um, liked? If you... I'm definitely going to, of course, say the Hyper Dimension series has a fantastic soundtrack. <laughs> nep. 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 Definitely. Nep. It even did some a bit of unity, uh, we'll tie, the, tie back together again in the fourth game, where the opening song was also the song that played during the final boss in the true ending. And it was really good. Mm. I think, yeah, that that trait of doing the same thing, like, at the end. It's really... People like circles. People do like People circles. Do like they circles. Say, I think it's the... And you know what the they ima- say, only squares can make a circle. <laughs> My friend has proven, <laughs> scientifically proven this. It's, it's real. I think it's the emotional impact, more of it. Oh yeah, it that just... was definitely emotional. In hyper- definitely. Yeah, it just brings you back to... At that that point when you have to like step back from your keyboard and just think about what just happened, that that moment mm-hmm. is the yeah. If we can do that and it's it's a emotionally and not just what on earth did I just watch, then I think we're on the side. Luckily, luckily we have a bunch of fantastic ideas that can easily fill out a bunch of entertaining episodes that can really build these characters. Yes. Yeah, the the problem is not our ideas; it's the that it takes time to make. Yeah. <laughs> Nat- oh, I just dropped my phone. <laughs> Nat Kraken said phone. in chat, um, 
using the OP in the final fight is a classic anime nut moment. <laughs> oh, of course. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yep. That's that's true. If we can Agreed. Yeah. Although I don't think I mean I can't say for certain, but I don't think there's gonna be a final fight in the anime. <laughs> maybe like Aww. more not maybe not a final fight in the physical sense, but like a final turning moment, I guess would be a better way. To put it? No, uh, the rival school will come over, the... and the school councils have to beat it down in the in the um, in the playground. <laughs> <laughs> and you, you know how the Milky Way and Andromeda galaxies are going to combine? It's going to be that. <laughs> oh, that would be quite. That would actually be would like be scientifically cool. accurate as well. If yeah. like, we could do the love live. Oh no, our school's going to be shut down and merged trope. <laughs> <laughs> and they have to they have to fight the school the other school councils in order to like survive. And there's like so, But then we could have like a physio fight and then show. Mars challenges them to like a Yu-Gi-Oh fight and then they <laughs> 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 like, they could have like physical like races and stuff, like it could be a swimming race and That would be pretty funny. It'd be a yeah. bit like the um just like the... super over the top food <laughs> fights, like you have in Shokugeki no Soma. <laughs> yeah, just... it'd be like a massive tournament where everyone in the class is like, "What's the best thing you can do?" And then we're like, "Okay, now we're gonna beat the other school at all of these things." <laughs> <laughs> and just challenge. We're gonna shut our school down. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, will I challenge you to a, a swim being run. an asshole duel? <laughs> <laughs> swim run Yu-Gi-Oh fist fight with music and this that and the other <laughs> imagine Uranus yeah. having a violin off with someone else <laughs> like a rap battle but with violins <laughs> yes violins are best that, w- that would be quite funny I think we're that's probably enough soundtracks for today yep. <laughs> before we all Go on about before I start talking about love yeah. life. <laughs> yep. And the next thing, I've just got some random questions now. So we can be slightly less official. Not that that was very official. What? Well, no, we were on topic. It's cool. It's cool. Um, what is the stupidest thing that you've got in trouble over? Oh, I I definitely know this one. You want to start then? Mm-hmm. All right, all right. Yeah, go on. So, wait. I think there are two instances that were super stupid. Okay, <laughs> they, they, both of these are in elementary school. Okay. Mm-hmm. First one was yep. um, let's see. I was in the back of the magnifying glass and like, I burned one leaf. Oh shit. <laughs> and then I got in trouble. Oh. <laughs> they think you were yeah, become was, a paramedic, like some arsonist or something. And like, yep. they they literally couldn't even find like anything like. They, they said I was, like, disturbing the school or something like that because they literally couldn't even find, like, an excuse for, like, what I was doing. So, like, yeah, that was... Disturbing the school by burning a leaf. Yeah. It's... <laughs> That's quite a harsh punishment. Like... Yeah, suspended. Suspended, too. What? What? My goodness. Yeah. You got to... that, that is mad. That's pretty ridiculous. It is. And that was a very stupid thing I got in trouble over. I think this, the stupidest thing I got in trouble at school over was oh, back in lower fourth, I think, the first year of high school. Um, and for the first few weeks as well. And we're sitting in RFs, which is our like religious studies thing. And we had this really like... I don't, I, not like religious teacher because the te- they have to be open about all religions, but she was, she came across that she was every religion at the same time and very much like, <laughs> like, like instead of being like, they're meant to be like impartial so that they're like open to all religions and whatever, but sh- her way of impartiality was being enthusiastic about every religion. Like, so it seemed like she, like, practiced literally everything. But um, in one class, I can't remember what we were learning about or anything. It wasn't particularly interesting. And we, like, we spent most of lower fourth RS just, like, drawing pictures of everything and then colouring them in nicely. And occasionally we did, like, a mind map or something. But it meant that all the time we were using, like, coloured pencils and rubbers and this, that and the other. And I think I was finishing off my homework or something. I was just might have even been doodling but um i passed 
a rubber to the friend who was sitting next to me because we were both kind of drawing and I can't remember if we were meant to be or not but she my teacher saw me pass a rubber into my friend's hand and she was like what are you doing get up and get out both of you (laughs) what oh yeah a quick note to all the Americans a rubber means an eraser (laughs) not what it means in American I just that was realized. my guess, but I wasn't sure. Um, yeah. I <laughs> <laughs> just realized just this, this story that. sounds so much worse. Okay, I passed in a razor to my friend, and it was like a white one. So, I guess, like, it was it was quite clear it was an eraser. And I passed it to her, and she had it in her hand, and she, like, sent us both out. So we're both standing outside the classroom. My friend still has this rubber in her hand. And <laughs> it was about ten minutes, and just, like, what even happened? Because she was just talking happily, and she sent us both out. And she came out to talk to us eventually, and she was like, what did you pass to her? And my friend Lucy opened her hand, and there's just a rubber. And my teacher looked at both of us, and and she was like, oh, I'm sorry. And then just walked back in the classroom. (laughs) (laughs) No explanation, like, what did you think we were doing? (laughs) I guess she thought we were, like, passing notes or something, but even if we were passing notes, she'd probably just been like, pass that to me instead of sending us both out of the classroom. (laughs) <laughs> yeah sorry for the confusion about rubber that probably no oh, yeah I just just thought i'd clarify because <laughs> it's a way different story if you think <laughs> that that's what it means yeah innocent a random piece of rubber <laughs> innocent stationery <laughs> <laughs> um the stupidest thing i've ever gotten in trouble for is probably back when I was in elementary school, which is grades one through five. I think it was in fifth grade. I got like really badly in trouble because I was reading a book in class when we were supposed to be doing work. Because it was it was a really good book and I was reading it. My teacher was like, you need to put the book away. <clears throat> and I was like, okay, I put it away. And she turned around and I picked it back up. Like the <laughs> stupid little kid I am. <laughs> and I start reading. And so she goes back to the front of the room. She turns around. She sees I'm still reading the book. So she comes over and takes the book away and yells at me for a good two minutes about following directions. <laughs> uh, following Who do you think you are? Incognito? That's literally the only disciplinary action that was ever taken against me in elementary school was reading a book when I wasn't supposed to be reading a book. I was a boring child. <laughs> My at primary school I had like a roller coaster of like discipline. Because when I was in reception, which is your kindergarten, I was getting in trouble all the time. As it's written on my record that I chucked someone over a wall. Wow. We had like we had like um the kindergarten um, playground was separate from it was kindergarten and nursery, so like three to five year olds had their own pro- playground separated from like the big kids. But there was a a, a yep. really short wall between them, so the teachers could talk over the top. Um, and I like, chucked someone over that wall. <laughs> they oh my me. Goodness. Um, Be free. <laughs> <laughs> and nice. I, was, I was like punching Fight people regularly and then I got into like year two and I just like completely switched and suddenly I was like this angel child and I didn't get in trouble like <laughs> the rest of the way through school I don't know what <laughs> happened I just decided not to punch people anymore well, I mean that's a good decision to make <laughs> yeah yep. I didn't yeah the rest of the secondary school, I didn't. Oh, apart from that rubber incident, I never got in trouble Oof. for anything, I don't think. <laughs> I got out of quite a few class detentions because certain teachers like came to vouch for me and said I needed to be doing other things. That was, that was how much of a teacher's pet I became. I was like, <laughs> my form would get into trouble because they'd been like talking in assembly or a founder's day or something. And they'd be like, okay, you all have to stay in at lunchtime. And then my physics teacher would come along and be like, oh no, she's meant to be helping in the laboratory. So she has to come out now and just <laughs> take me away. <laughs> That's like the opposite of getting into trouble though. Mm. Glad to see you've been reformed into a proper <laughs> member of society. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, from um, my delinquent days as a troublesome four-year-old. 
Hmm. Did you ever get into trouble over anything stupid, Nick, or not really? Um, back when I was younger, I haven't really gotten in trouble in years. Look at but us all, like angels. I have a very bad dr bus driver. No one likes her. She is extremely old and mean, and not even that good of a driver. <laughs> and one time, I was sitting with my cousin, and I, I forgot what he did, but he did something. And then I got in trouble for it, and I had to sit in the front of the bus for the rest of the year, and that was, like, towards the beginning of the year. That's about it. Oh, I forget you guys have, like, school buses Oof. and things. Yeah. I have an hour bus ride, so... Uh, <laughs> yeah, an hour. it depends on where you live, but That's... most people usually take the bus. Well, because we have school mini buses where, like, the sports teams go on trips and stuff. But that's not really that bad, because that's, like... They're like ten seaters. So you guys usually walk or take public transit? Yeah, we have. But I mean, people do take the bus, but it'll be like a public bus, and it'll be like twenty minutes. Or you can get. I think to my school, people get trains, buses, walk, cycle. People drive in. You know, like there's there's a lot of public transport, especially around London. That you don't. Yeah. That you get I like a fair spread. I wish I lived somewhere with public transit, but. <clears throat> It's sort of the convention here in uh, Texas and Houston, at least, to build out and build no infrastructure because that's a genius damn idea. Well, at least so you're not you have to own a car. Around. I mean, we are very lucky with the underground. Um, yeah, our houses aren't crowded, but our roadways are, and it's worse. <laughs> Oof. <laughs> There's awful traffic. London, London, like, overground, is, like, traffic is awful. Like, no, yeah, I know. Taking, taking I know. the car anywhere is just like stupid if you go into central. <laughs> it's just like. Yeah. But no, if I could, I there's, would. There's a, there's a good majority of people who like take bikes and stuff, so that's fine. Not yeah, as, it's not so nice for me if I walk cities. out, like, if I walk out a few minutes from my dorm, there's literally like a railroad track. I mean, I mean, like a light rail that runs directly through our school. So it's nice. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah, we've got a train station right outside the school that goes directly into central London, which is quite cool. But um, yeah, the, actually, the... They, they build most schools now, ne or secondary schools at least, next to a train station, which is hmm. quite good. So you always Yeah, I don't know. My city has something against train stations. We have one light rail line with three stops in downtown. Oof. What is the difference <laughs> between like a light rail and like... like... A light rail is, it's basically like a small train. Like, you know the metro in Paris, if you've ever seen that? Yeah. The overground yeah. metro? It's like that. Oh, okay. So that's like the DLR. Yeah. Okay. It's essentially just a train, but we call it light rail because it doesn't transport cargo, it transports people. Ah. Uh, mm. Oh, yeah, because you have, you have different cargo lines. Because we, yeah, like we, have, we have our diesel tracks and then our overground tracks. And most of our diesel tracks are... Um, cargo and then the like well, i am excited though because overground. our city is getting a bullet train line from houston to dallas which is normally an eight hour drive but it'll only take like an hour and a half the, the high <laughs> not that we go to are... dallas for anything <laughs> are we, we've had hs2 in the like progress for ages we just I, th I think the really stupid about, thing about HS1 that like that's the only bullet train we have at the moment because everyone's protesting so much because our government's really bad about planning where the next high speed one is going to go. It goes down from <laughs> it goes from central London down to Brighton, I think. One of the might be Bournemouth. I don't know. There's too many seaside towns that begin with B, but it goes down to somewhere like that. <laughs> but you can get from central London to the Olympic Park. Um, for some reason, they put that on a high-speed line. And the train journey, I think, is 48 seconds. And it's absolutely ridiculous. It's like halfway across London in 48 seconds. That's amazing. And it's so stupid. Like, why Why would you Why would you build a high-speed train stop, like, a minute from where it starts? <laughs> Just, like, it's not even that long on a normal train. It's like 10 minutes. And it's... Oh, it was really stupid. But they like during the Olympics, people were taking like this ridiculously fast train from central London to the Olympic Park. Yeah, we oh, have yeah. our 
I, I wish we had more trains where I lived. It would make it so much easier. We actually, our city did a highway expansion a few years ago, and they're still doing it now, where they're building another ring of highway around the city. Another so we have three rings of highway now. <laughs> like, why not just build a damn train line? I mean, we, anyway. have, we, have too, we get to the point in some places where we have too many trains that even the train drivers don't know where they're going. Because there was a story, like, <laughs> last year about a train driver driving a electric overground. So the train gets its power from the rails and the cable up above, and the, the, the like, electricity goes through it. And that's opposed to a diesel, which is like powered by fuel. And some of the lines in England are diesel only. So like at some point when you get far enough about uh, out of London, the power lines overhead cuts out, so only diesel trains can continue. And, but there's some routes in England that have one diesel line and one um, electric line. So if you're on the right side of the tracks, then you're fine. But there was one train driver who was driving on the diesel lines with an uh, a, um, electric train and didn't even realise, didn't get stopped at the signals, <laughs> nothing, and then got... <laughs> and, but then you can drive for about five minutes without power because of the little battery, and then got so got five minutes along these tracks without realising, and then suddenly the train cuts out. <laughs> and it but it was the line from um uh London to Manchester so it put the entirety of the country's trains in standstill just oh, because no. of this one train stuck on the tracks there was like 3 hour delays on the underground in London because people had been delayed doing this doing that and because train drivers couldn't get to where they need to go because obviously the train drivers use the trains to get to the next train so it was just <laughs> Absolute chaos. Goodness. Goodness. The trains are also really unreliable when it snows because we're not very good at snow. So, like, a tiny bit of snow happens and the entirety of the country is just like, what do we do? <laughs> <laughs> well, that was an interesting tangent about trains. I can't even remember how we got there. Like yeah, all right. Just to give you an idea of how much of a pain it is to drive around Houston with no public transit, the the area that Houston occupies is three times bigger than London's metro area, and we have no public transit. Rip. Like, uh, we take it so much for granted because it's like, oh, the underground's down. Oh, I'll hop on a bus. Oh, there's no buses. Oh, I'll just grab a bike. You know, it's just like. No, it is, it is not that way here. Like, after visiting places with public transportation, I am so aware of how much of a pain in the ass it is to get anywhere. But anyway, I, c I could rant about Houston's <laughs> lack of public services all day. Uh, I mean, we, we complain about the underground a lot because it stinks and it's, like, annoying. And just even, like, they, they choose the most annoying people to be announcers, I swear. Like, they choose people with purposely annoying voices. Because they always, like, um, there is a problem on Platform 5. Anyone who was taking the 1864 to London Euston now needs Oof. to move to Platform 7. You know, and it's, like... <laughs> they, they always do it like if the pla if the one on train on platform 16 is cancelled you always have to go to platform one on the entirety of the other side of the station which usually involves going down two sets of stairs under like an underpass over the underground then round here and then down there and by the time you've got there the train's left <laughs> <laughs> hey come on guys cars are a sign of comments. individualism and freedom the they cost idea. so much money <laughs> <laughs> oh, but our, our trains are all like capitalistic now, like they're all privately owned, so they cost so much. Like in Europe, they still have mostly national owned trains, so they have efficient service and it's like 10% of the prices of our trains. Like we're so lucky in London that it's monitored by like London Transport TfL. But like, if you're if you're taking the train to from London to Birmingham and you don't have like a season pass or a National Rail Gold card or something, it's like a hundred pound. It's ridiculous. It's like, yeah, no, I remember taking a train from London up to Edinburgh. Oh, Freaking God. Expect. Oh, no, because that's a Virgin line as well. The Virgin's yeah. like, oh. Whoosh. Ugh. If we go down to Weymouth um, in the summer on, like, a, a friend trip, and but we always have to... They do, they do like, summer deals where it's like, oh, return to Weymouth for £20, and you're like, oh, that's that's, like, decent. 
And so we have to wait for those days because otherwise a return to Weymouth is like £80. It's, it's stupid. It's like it's a two hour train journey. That's like about $100, by the way. Yeah. For like two hour train journey. It's, it's... At least Ridiculous. we have them. At least we have them. Yeah, oh, yeah Nat Kraken. We need Elon Kuhn to finish the Hyperloop before his date with Mark. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yes, please. Oh, that would be good. And CG will be the one to build it. All right, I've got next random question before we go back. Everyone gets too angry about transport. This is, <laughs> this is actually a really odd one, but I like Com's question last week about compliments. It's one of my favorite questions to ask. Um, what's your favorite taboo sandwich filling? Like, one that most... Like, I always have... Um. At camp, we always make... Um, fish finger and crisp sandwiches which is surprisingly really really nice but it's not like your average sandwich or just like any combination of food mm. that's kind of taboo mm -hmm. fish finger and crisps i recommend though sounds really odd but it's, it's a really Sorry, good sandwich. I'm, just a, I'm just a super plain person i guess i get my peanut butter and that's it and like or normal butter that's about it for me. Just straight butter. <laughs> straight butter. Well, I mean, <laughs> no, no. You, you toast your butter. bread, you know, just like. Oh, oh yeah. So I, I did. I did have. I did have a friend that would just eat butter like it was cheese. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, she'd she'd cut up a lump a lump of butter like she was cutting cheese off the block, and then I'd think it was cheese, and then suddenly she'd be eating it like with her hands, and it would be melting. In her hands, I'm like, that's not cheese. <laughs> that's not cheese. That's butter. <laughs> that cheese, that's butter. And she's like, yeah, I'm just eating butter. Just, ugh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, yeah, I don't really got any weird combinations either. Just the regular. I don't know. I would say probably the weirdest sandwiches I eat. They're not like sandwiches, but. It's sort of a tradition here that if you have leftovers and you heat them up and stick stick them in a tortilla, it's whatever it is, taco. Uh -huh. And then it's pretty good. So what I'll do is I'll take whatever leftover is in the fridge, chop it up into small pieces, stick it in the microwave in a tortilla, heat it up, becomes a, like what, fried fish taco, a meatball taco. Ooh. Ooh. Uh, uh, meatball taco sounds like it. Meatball tacos are delicious, by the way. That's very respectable. It feels like... I, again, I go back to camp because we eat some very weird stuff on camp. But the last, the last morning, we basically what we do is we raid the store cupboard and take literally everything else that's out and just lay it on the table, and that's breakfast. And it usually involves absolutely no breakfast food, so it's just like. <laughs> but it will be like half a bit, a bit of salami and some random cheese and stuff, and then you just end up like loading up your plate with like and it's like half a can of baked beans, a glass of milk. <laughs> <laughs> the everything else just gets loaded on your plate. Oh man, did you know weirdest taco I've had? It was uh cactus. Cactus, cactus taco. taco. Yeah, yeah, that's a thing. Sorry, cactus huh. coon. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> cactus coon died yeah, for this. Yeah, I think if he dies, turn him into a taco. <laughs> oh. But um can't confirm. It basically tastes like beans, like string beans, sort of. Yeah, it huh. was okay, I guess. It wasn't that great. No, string beans on a taco just doesn't sound that great to me. Yeah. Anyone try those Doritos Locos tacos? No. They're so good. We, we don't eat at Taco Bell. <laughs> They're so good, though. So not real tacos. They are real tacos. They're delicious. No. I don't think I've eaten... Fisticuffs, they're real. Fajitas <laughs> are better than tacos. I haven't eaten at Taco Bell one. Yes. Well, I'm not talking about what's better here. I'm just saying Doritos Locos just The only reason you would buy one of those is for the meme, in my opinion. But they're really good. They're like the only kind of hard shell tacos I actually like. Because it actually has flavor for the hard shell. My friend, you need to come down to Texas and we'll get you some real Tex-Mex. Hey, Hoss. I don't know. I think te Tex-Mex is better than straight Mexican food. In my opinion, really? because yeah, Bro, that's that's what that's what I really? think because Tex-Mex is a lot more like utilization of tortillas and fajitas and enchiladas and stuff like that. 
whereas straight Mexican food is more rice, soups, etc. Okay, like like the main Mexican food I've had is like tacos, like kind of like carne asada. You got the beef. You got like the guacamole. Yeah, yeah, like that's that's actual. The carne asada is actual Mexican food. I, I'm a fan of that stuff. I, I don't. I, I don't. I don't know. No, yeah, it's good for sure. I was anyway sitting there wondering for a second why, if Mexican food is such a big thing in America, it isn't in Britain? And then I realized your neighbors. <laughs> it's like it's a uh, three-hour drive versus a fifteen-hour plane flight <laughs> across an ocean. <laughs> yeah, I just had like a momentary blank. No, no, the Mexican food you have in Britain is probably more authentic than the Mexican food we have here in Texas, though. <laughs> I can't think of a single Mexican restaurant near me, though. We've got like there's there's quite a lot of like Thai ones, and you've got your Indians, your Chinese, your fish and chips, and. There's a Mediterranean one, you know, you go all that. I can't think of a Mexican one. Other than, like, I think that there's, like, there's one place that's, like, tacos in, like, right in the town centre. I don't know. We we just, we're, we're, we're very good at colonising places, so we always have tons of restaurants that aren't, like, British restaurants. And no one well, wants to go out for a roast. You never got Mexico. Yeah, true. <laughs> We do. That's probably why. People, no, because people just went out and then they got addicted to the food there and so they brought back people that could make it. And then we just nice. have all these restaurants. We never, like... I'm just thinking about neighbours' food. Like, I can't think of a food that's Welsh. Like, I, I can't... Think probably of, just because they're just... It's, so, just it's just probably British, similar. Probably. It's just renamed. They're like... They're like, oh, this isn't a roast dinner. This is a key smash. <laughs> 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 I can't, like, Scottish food is different, though. Oh, actually, I just thought of this. Another weird, like, I've never had one of these sandwiches because I'd never heard of it before. But apparently people where I live eat uh, jelly and Miracle Whip sandwiches. Yeah. Like, what's, what? what? What's Miracle uh, Whip? It's, it's whipped cream, essentially. It's, it's a type of whipped cream. So oh, I would. Oh, I don't like whipped cream, but like that, I know that, that so many people so that much, would eat that. Yeah, it's just jelly and whipped cream. I I imagine it's so sweet and sugary. Did you guys ever play the jelly game with like the jelly pots? No, uh, I no. Don't think so. What is that? <laughs> you, you you get like the you know jelly pots. So you have like a pot of jelly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like, and yeah. they're all like a standard size because they're like, oh, you just buy them from the supermarket. And then basically you have to rip them open at the same time and like squish the whole jelly into your mouth from the plastic cup Ugh. and then hold it <laughs> in your mouth for as long as possible. Oh, boy. So you've got, but like wow. the trick is to get the biggest jelly pots. So like you struggle to like hold them in your mouth, but then you're not allowed to swallow them, and they're too big to swallow anyway. But you can't really chew, and then it's just whoever like sits with it in their mouth the longest without like laughing so much it just like falls all over the table. Uh. <laughs> we we never did that, but we grew hot peppers in our backyard and ate those and see who could keep those in the mouth the longest. Oh, hot peppers. Are that, that was a terrible idea. The, fu the fun of the jelly, though, is that you're half choking and you're laughing so much that you, like, start choking even more. <laughs> we yeah, just, we I, I think this is why America left Britain. <laughs> 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 we, were, we were doing it at county camp one time when um, the, like, district leader came in. And we were we were meant to be cruel. <laughs> we were meant to be like the older ones leading the camp, and the guys, the guys, Great example, guys. the guys were in like the tent next door, like sitting around, like doing crocheting or something that we'd sent them to do. And we were <laughs> sitting there with jelly in our mouths, and she came in. <laughs> and, and the, um, a few of us managed to like spit it back into the pot so that we could have a conversation, <laughs> but some people were too late, like noticing she came in, so I had to sit there with jelly in their mouth and try and keep a straight face the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> and she was like giving us instructions for the next day and being like, "You need to look up this." And we didn't find enough toilet roll, and we're like, "Yes, okay." <laughs> <laughs> It's definitely a good party game though. Next like Halloween. For or sure, you that guys sounds do. fun. Just 
fill your mouths full of jelly. <laughs> 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 oh, um, by jelly, I mean like, because you guys call jam jelly, don't you? Yeah. Uh, sometimes. But like, I mean like jelly jelly, not jam jelly. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, seeds and <laughs> Filling your mouth full it. of jam would be like... <laughs> oh, just spooning marmalade into your mouth, that would be interesting. Pretty much. Oh, oh, I, I, <laughs> oh, I, I, I did think you were talking about jam, okay. What? Wait, wait, so jelly's just like, um, kind of like pudding like sort the, of thing? Like the grape like gelatin, gelatin yeah, yeah, stuff. Okay, kind of okay, okay, that's what Yeah. Yeah, that's why it like it the the one that like sets in pots because then you like just chuck uh, it back okay. into your mouth. Like it's a bit like a jelly shot, but a lot bigger, and you're not allowed to swallow it. <laughs> I think that's enough weird food for now. Anyway, we're... yeah. <laughs> All right, to do the the final segment because we keep coming back to this, which is adding to the, the one word story. Which yes, I don't know if um, <laughs> Nick and Incog have you seen. Com- yeah, this, yes. this this is actually the <laughs> script for our last episode. So the, <laughs> the, we have to add to it every week. This this is how we write the other episodes. We're just like <laughs> this. This is our demonstration of how we do it for you. All, so yeah, yeah. Okay. Take notes, Nick Kraken. Okay, let's bring it up onto the screen. I had to make the text like half the size so that it fits. So Yep. Um Do one of you want to read it out or should I just go for it? For just to catch us up to speed. Uh I'll go for it this week. Alright. <clears throat> Once there was a girl who eats trash that's all gone into the trash. Today there was donuts <laughs> at the store dumpster and it's sweet. <laughs> Raccoons die from hobos and cannibals sometimes. They die. Reincarnated gods strike lollicons that fight raccoons. Extremely agitated, as trap lollies bark gaily at passersby, everyone eats Fortnite sensually, sensually as cats urinate on. Meanwhile, the raccoons fight for on bush-loving Australians. Australians acquire peanut farmers to throw aggressively massive cat nyandos at, at raccoons. <laughs> Emus glorify outback heroism, cannibalize cultists in lollicons. They die, sensual. What happened to the trash girl? Find out next week. <laughs> <laughs> that's where Trash Donut comes from. Oh my goodness, I didn't even know. Yes, that's why you need to watch the podcasts. Ooh. That's where all the memes come from. <laughs> that, that, those last two lines were added last week. Uh, like, as yeah. like, the end. So. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, let's try and bring this story together. Because we tried last week and it just... <laughs> what direction should we take it? Should we decide on that before I we th- start? I think we need to go I back to the trash... I central direction, guys. <laughs> <laughs> I, I personally think we need to go back to Trash Girl. Because, like, what happens to her? She just... Alright. We'll take she, it in that she, direction. I think then. she goes to sleep. And it's sleep. <laughs> <laughs> Is that the store dumpster or the girl? I don't know. I have no idea. Oof. Okay. Uh, okay, Rose I guess I'll start Easter. with... Yeah, I'll start with the, because... You can't really do much else than... Nick. The girl. The girl. Who? Who? Eats. Eats. Trash. Was going commenting uh from going from oh wait um the girl who eats trash is going from the Hmm. Uh, you there, Picard? Yep. Yeah, I'm just trying to think of a location. Funny location. I mean, she's at the store dumpster at the moment, I think. (laughs) (laughs) Unless she's been, like, displaced by the... Oh. (laughs) 
<laughs> the girl who eats trash is going from the dumpster. And? And. Going from the dumpster and is... Falling. <laughs> tech. What? Falling tech? <laughs> fooling. Tech. Oh, fooling? Or I, was I, it fooling or fall, falling? Fooling. Like, f fall, fall, oh, like falling. Fall. Falling over. Oh, it was falling? Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, that's yeah. my accent. Okay, falling. Over. <laughs> falling over. Don't mind my typing. Rubbers. <laughs> <laughs> Full circle. Rubbers. <clears throat> um, Shall we full stop when? there? Yeah. Oh, oh, rubbers. When? Oh, that should be a new line. When? Along. When along? Yeah, like when along came. That's what I was. Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, I'll just I'll go with that thing. <laughs> came. Um Shoda NASA. <laughs> That's two words. With, with a dash, with a dash. <laughs> oh <Ooh>. boy. <laughs> Shoda NASA uh holding. Forty. <laughs> Forty? Tex. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's that... very clear who Trash Girl is. <laughs> well, Uwu has been using that Trash Girl. <laughs> is that a period, I think? Mm, uh, yeah, yeah we'll, we'll say that's a period. In Cog or me? It is me. Alright. <clears throat> mm, butter. Faster. <laughs> oh. uh, is. <laughs> Buttery. <laughs> <laughs> Period. <laughs> 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 The fire is buttery. <laughs> Jelly. Oof. The uh, jelly. Jelly filled. Um. Come on, do the meme. <laughs> Rub <Rubbish>. <laughs> 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 um. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> Pardon? Were. Were. Essentially. <laughs> <laughs> Displayed. <laughs> <laughs> On. A. Mm, let me think. Um. Mm. Mm, how about counter? Counter. Uh, which? Which? NASA. Hmm. Which NASA eight? <laughs> <laughs> wait, 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 don't don't end it yet, okay. essentially. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh I'll put a period after that and this angered 
Boo woo. <laughs> Which? Um, caused. Ha. To. Explode. <laughs> <laughs> She's an electrode now, are we? <laughs> oh, hang on. I think I'm going to have to move the text up a little bit more. Explode. Uh, period. NASA. Uh, NASA found. We found or? Fortnite. Found. NASA found Fortnite. Singing. Sing. <laughs> Fly. <gasps> <laughs> Me two mm. Houston <laughs> <laughs> Damn it, Angel. Yes, world, it sensually <laughs> <laughs> yet again. <laughs> Actually, essentially, as he made mm. a big meme. <laughs> Meme. Uh, period. They. 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 Picked. New text. <laughs> Girl in the lab. Ooh, had forty of them. <laughs> no, NASA had forty of them. <laughs> um, flowers. What? They picked flowers. Flowers. Huh? They, they picked okay. like text as in like a, 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 a apostrophe, I guess. Oh, and text. They picked new text flowers. Wait, capitalized flower or no? No, no, that th no. You know what? Okay, no, never mind. I, I, I take that back. Okay. They picked new. <laughs> they picked new text. Full stop. Okay, fine. I, I guess that works. Yeah. No, no, that 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 works. You still get to say a word though. Oh. We'll do flowers, like like just text with like apostrophe flowers. Yeah, sorry, that was fine. New text flowers. Yes. You know, we're we're doing world building right now. You know, what are these flowers? Yep. <laughs> hmm. Uh, full stop. We'll start a new sentence. Mm -hmm. Um. Kind of getting difficult. These. To Oof, these. ow. Almost tripped. These. How do you spell? How many? How many? How many? How many E's? Uh, T H E S E. Oh, it is only these. one. These. <laughs> I was going to watch my numerous attempts. Fest, 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 I'm not the best at spelling, okay? These. <laughs> I'm not gonna judge. No one is here. These Grammarly. flowers were very 
colorful. Because they are jelly. <laughs> Intoxicated. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> With a full stop. Oh man, I really can't read this anymore. The worst drug, jelly pods. Oof. Jelly rubbers. <laughs> <laughs> the worst drug. Uh, I'll probably wrap it up soon, so let's do one more sentence. One more. All one right. More. For, for this week, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll have to reformat it for next time, so it actually fits. We gotta, we gotta bring back Trash Girl, so we can continue the story. What about the emus? The emus are just like... <laughs> <laughs> They're the heroes of the outback. <laughs> Spit off. <laughs> oh yeah, I forgot. I forgot we've landed back in America for now. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, <laughs> on Dragon Ball Z. <laughs> oh, 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 sorry, it's me. Sorry, done. Darn. Emus. Emus. Yeah. Fight. Fight. Um. I can't remember what they were fighting originally. <laughs> I mean, it never matter. <laughs> Meanwhile, emus fight trash. Girl. Girl. <laughs> Essentially. <laughs> <laughs> Should we leave it there? <laughs> that sounds Yes. Wait, actually Crom have the final word. Just if no, you no, can. that's a full stop right All there. Right. <laughs> uh, we essentially quite a few times, but you know it's Well ori yes. originally it was um a different word, but I substituted it for Twitch purposes. Yeah, no, originally it was sexually. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I will reformat it nicely so that you can actually read it next week uh, to make the text like half the size because it wouldn't fit on the screen anymore <laughs> well, I think it's important to have the context of the whole thing otherwise it just doesn't make any sense yeah I mean <laughs> add this to the merch store Oof. <laughs> the merch store our very own novel <laughs> Yes. Yep. Novella. I don't think we'll get it to novel size. <laughs> anyway, we are beginning to overrun, so I think, well, we finished the story, so. Yeah. That was good, guys. I hope Very... everyone yeah, else enjoyed fun. it as much as we did, our six viewers. Thank you for sticking <laughs> with us. Yay. Um, We're up to eight. Are we? Oh. Yeah. Party. But, um, that does it for this week um, we hope you enjoyed spending time with us and getting all our updates and stuff sorry we can't share much more but um, there's lots of fun things to look forward April to in 1st. the future so tune in next week boys yeah. tune in next week tune in next week and keep a close eye on our discord and our youtube channel for more memes and stuff as you wait um, and for mm. other things um, with that it's goodbye from us at Soul Studios um, Bye. Bye. <laughs> Bye and have a great week <laughs> and remember earth chance not flat